right, today I am spreading the love. We're talking about Venus today. I'm talking about Venus today. Venus or Aphrodite, so Aphrodite to the Greeks, Venus to the Romans. I'm going to call her Venus throughout this uh, just for kind of ease and so that things don't get complicated. She is one of the most ancient of goddesses. Venus was born, if you can use that expression, um, from the sea, which was fertilized by the genitals of Uranus. Kronos, Uranus's son, um, overthrew him and killed him and for good measure castrated him, threw his genitals into the sea, the foam was fertilized and voila, Venus. She is the goddess of love and beauty and desire and sex and marriage and lust and I think probably when you think about Venus you probably think about a, a, a beautiful nude. She wasn't always depicted as such actually way back way back way back when in the earliest depictions of Venus she was clothed and she was only she only began to be depicted nude when a fantastic fantastic fourth century BC sculptor called Praxiteles um, created a nude statue well in fact he created a clothed statue and a nude statue of Venus and there were sort of two that he created them for, for two different towns the the town or the city of Kos got first dibs and they went for the clothed version because that was the tradition and they thought the nude version was a little bit oh, what will people think and so the city of Canidos got the nude version and if ever I'll show you an image of the nude version if ever Canidos wanted to uh, to be put on the map um, this was the way to do it because this statue of Venus has now become you know an image that that most of us could conjure up in our heads or something like this uh, and it was incredibly incredibly famous in Knidos. So famous in fact that the story goes that Venus herself heard about it and went to see it and she said with a slightly flirtatious giggle oh she said I didn't know that Praxiteles had seen me naked. Okay I'm making up the bit about the flirtatious giggle but you know. Um, she was also the object of desire for many a young fellow. There's a, a, a story that is very often told about a young sailor who snuck into the temple one evening and was so overcome with lust for this statue of Venus that he, uh, he left a little stain on her thigh. I'll say no more. So over, so from, from this very early depiction of Venus. This is how we, we see her and this is how most um, most depictions are of Venus. They're a beautiful young nude in, in often quite a, a sexy pose. Except in the Middle Ages. Uh, so in the Middle Ages, here we go, this is Venus from the Middle Ages because in the Middle Ages you just didn't depict anybody nude, maybe Eve, but even so you had to be a little bit careful. So this is a gorgeous, if slightly cutesy depiction of Venus. It's actually from the very beginning of the 15th century. It's 1405, six, something like that. Um, and it's from a book um, of, it's, it was, it's a book that was uh, a lovely little conceit. It was, um, it was supposedly for Hector of Troy when he was 15 and it was a book of wisdom to sort of teach him the ways of the world. And this is a, a depiction of Venus. Um, the illustrations are by a female artist called Christine de Pise. Uh, it's rather, it's rather gorgeous. But as you can see, fully clothed hearts. So we've still got this love theme going on and she's supposed to be sitting on a rainbow, I think. So yeah, if that's a rainbow, big fail. If she's supposed to be sitting on it, even bigger fail. But nonetheless, it's very charming. So the kind of images that we then get as we come into the Renaissance are more images like this. 
Um, Venus was depicted far more often in the Renaissance era because anything to do with classical mythology, anything to do with the ancient civilizations of Greece and Rome were right up there, um, incredibly popular in literature and in arts, and of course Venus being a, a pagan goddess from classical antiquity, she was there too. Um, so this is one image, this is by Giorgione, this dates to about 1510. I'll show you some more images. This is another image, this is Titian, 1530s. Here's another image, we're jumping on about 100 years now, this is Velazquez and this is mid 17th century, so about 1649, 1650. Um, yeah, Venus, mm, or is it just a bunch of really, really attractive women painted nude? Well, mm, yes. There definitely was that. Venus, poor Venus, became a bit of a vehicle for patrons to be able to ask artists to paint perhaps their mistresses. Possibly this one by Velasquez was his mistress while he was on a, a trip to Rome. We don't know for sure. Um, but, um, but yeah, definitely, definitely a, an excuse to paint a beautiful woman. But if asked, they would say, no, my goodness, this isn't a depiction of my mistress, for example. No, this is absolutely a depiction of Venus. And sometimes Venus would have attributes um, to, or, 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 at, there would be attributes included in the painting to prove this. So in this one, um, as I say, by Velázquez, we have a little fellow with wings and a sort of a sash across his chest, which is actually for his, um, his um, quiver, for his arrows. So this is Cupid. I think I've got a close up of, of Cupid. So Cupid is Venus's, um, where's my close up of Cupid? Cupid is Venus's son. Oh, I can't find him. Uh, I can find him, there we are. So if you see a little fellow with, in this case, a strange haircut, we all know a bit about that, don't we? These days, people have been cutting their, uh, other people's hair at home. Um, so this is, if you see a little fellow with wings, this is Cupid, which is Venus's son. In this one, by, um, by Titian, you think, okay, well, is there anything here to suggest that this might be Venus or is it just a beautiful nude? Oh, well, no, we have got, in fact, some roses, certainly flowers, but I think there should be roses, um, pink and or red roses absolutely associated with Venus. And this goes back to classical antiquity as well. So this is a, a long tradition that these flowers are associated with the, God, uh, the, with the Venus, the goddess. Um, this one by Giorgione, absolutely nothing at all really there. <laughs> no flowers, no Cupid, there's nothing else that I can see. But in fact, I'm being slightly mean because in fact, originally this would have had, this had um, a depiction of Cupid somewhere in the background, but at some point in its long history, um, the image of Cupid has been painted out. There's something else about these three images. If you notice, they are all of um, a beautiful woman reclining. Um, so this is one of the traditional ways in which Venus is depicted, just lying back, reclining. Rokeby Venus, uh, a little bit unusual, she's facing away from us, but still lying on a, on a couch. There's another way in which Venus is often depicted, and that is in this way. So here she is being adorned. Um, and, and this is quite this is quite common. So this this version would be called Venus at her toilette. So sometimes she's being adorned. Sometimes she is looking in a mirror. Uh, so those are 
to other um, other ways that you can spot Venus. The one with her looking in the mirror also has an attribute. Um, you can't really see, I don't think. Down at the very bottom, there are some doves. So there you go. If you see doves in a painting next to a beautiful nude, that's probably Venus as well. And again, the idea of doves goes all the way back to classical antiquity too. Um, in this one, in this one, where she's being adorned, um, there's a lovely little passage in this. So we have Cupid once again. Um, I'm going to bring him up a little bit larger as well. So here we go. This is Cupid once again. And you can see that he's holding something up. And what he's holding up is an earring. It's, it's, it's probably quite small, depending on what device you're looking at this, this painting on. This is by Guido Reni. So this dates to 1622, um, 25. Um, and, he's, and, and the earring that he's holding up is in fact a pearl earring. So pearls are also very much associated with Venus. Well done him, there is a jewellery box in this painting and it's got quite a lot of bling in it, but he hasn't chosen the blingiest one. He's chosen this lovely pearl earring and he's holding it up, I always think, as if to say, you know, is this, is this the right one? Is this okay? You know, sh sh shall I give this one to mum? It's, um, it's quite a, a, a sweet little, sweet little part of the painting. So, earrings, doves, pink, let's take this off, um, earrings, doves, earrings, pearls, doves, pink or red roses, um, reclining, being adorned. There's just one more way that you can spot Venus or plenty because there's a lot of depictions of Venus but these are the most common. So I'm just going to show you one final image which again if I can find it which I can't find it. Oh perhaps I didn't download it that's annoying. Um, I didn't, I didn't download it. I will show you next time. Um, there's another way that you can spot Venus and that is if there is a golden apple in the um, in the image. Uh, there's, a whole, there's a whole other story. I'm going to tell that story on Monday, um, but it's all to do with the Trojan War and Venus is given a golden apple by Paris. So lots of ways to spot Venus. Um, thank you very much for joining me. I am going to turn comments back on again. Um, hair looks lovely. <laughs> That's the first comment I've seen. <laughs> Are you talking about Venus's hair or mine? Venus quite often has pearls in her hair, so you can spot her. Um, and sometimes it's quite subtle, but look for pearls in the hair, pearl earrings, pearl necklaces, pearl bracelets, um, and so on. Yes, so as I say, that was Venus. I am going to talk more about Venus because I've sort of half teased you with this story of um, of the judgment of Paris in which Venus features quite a lot. Um, so I'm gonna do next time Rubens' judgment of Paris. So, oh, at least I expect to see pearls in my hair <laughs> on Monday. I'll try. I'll try. I, I'll see whether I've got any um, pearl clips or something. I don't. I don't think I have actually. Um, oh yes, and Adrian says, look to the west in the evening to see the beautiful planet Venus, which is well placed at the moment. Thank you, Adrian. How much do I know about your ancestor Isabella d'Este? Well, I know that she was a real firecracker of a woman. I do know a little bit about her, so perhaps I'll do something about this Isabella d'Este. Um, and Mantegna and yeah, Isabella d'Este completely, completely rocked. 16th century, um, 16th century goddess, I was gonna say. A lot of people thought she was a goddess. Um, she, um, yes, yeah, she was a, she was involved in politics and, um, and, and very involved in um, the arts, a, a massive collector of arts. She was quite an unusual lady for her time. So, 
Okay, have a very good day, everybody. Thank you very much for joining me. I will see you on Monday at 11 o'clock. If you've got anything that you want to share, to, that's um, got any ideas for talks or any ideas for what is making you happy or, or lovely things that are happening in this time, do send them to me so we can all be cheered up at the beginning of these. But for now, have a great day. Bye. Thank you.